This is part 20 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss radio buttons validation with an example. Here is what we want to do. We want to make this gender field a required field. If none of the radio buttons are selected, we want to display this validation error message, gender is required. As soon as we select one of the radio buttons, the validation error message should disappear. Notice on our create employee form, we have the gender radio buttons right here. At the moment, this field is not a required field. And to make it a required field, let's include a required attribute on both these radio buttons. So let's flip over to Visual Studio Code. Here is the male radio button. Let's make it required by including the required attribute. Along the same lines, let's make the female radio button also required. Next, let's create a template reference variable. Let's name it gender. Let's do the same thing with our female radio button as well. Next, we are going to use Bootstrap to style the validation error messages. We are going to use this gender template reference variable in our class binding. So on this div element, we are going to use a class binding. And this is how the class binding looks like. So if the gender field is touched and if it is invalid, then we want to add this Bootstrap CSS class has error to this div element that has the form group class. On this label element that displays the static text gender, we're going to use another bootstrap class and that is control label class. We're using this class to style the field text which is gender in this case. Finally, we have to display the validation error message itself. For that, we're going to use this span element. Notice the ngf structural directive right here. If the gender field is touched and if it is invalid, then this span element that displays the validation error message is added to the DOM, otherwise it is removed. As you can see, validating radio buttons is very similar to validating text boxes. We discussed validating text boxes in our previous video. First, we include the validation attributes like required, min length, pattern, etc. on the field that we want to validate. And then we create a template reference variable by exporting the ng model directive. We then use that template reference variable in the class binding and then on the span element that actually displays the validation error message. So let's save our changes and then take a look at the browser. Notice we have our gender field right here but we don't see the validation error message. That's because for the validation error message to show up, both these conditions must be true. The gender field must be touched and it must be invalid. We know at the moment the gender field is invalid because we made both these radio buttons required and at the moment none of the radio buttons are selected. And for the validation error message to show up, we also want to make this touched property true. And for that to become true, the field should receive and lose focus without having any of the radio buttons selected. So let's click within the phone number text box, press tab key. Notice at the moment the focus is on contact preference. Now when I press the tab key one more time, the focus is on the gender field. When I press the tab key again, notice we see the validation error message, gender is required. And as soon as we select one of the radio buttons, the validation error message disappears as expected. Now let's validate the contact preference radio buttons as well. Notice now when the contact preference radio buttons lose focus without having one of them selected, we get the validation error message. The same is the case with gender. As soon as we select one of the radio buttons, the validation error messages disappear. Here is the code that we just discussed. In our next video, we'll discuss cross-field validation in Angular. Thank you for listening and have a great day.